The same questions were put to a selection of creative professionals, exploring their attitudes and their commercial creativity. What do you do for a living? I'm an artist, a publisher, a designer, a mother. Um, I earn my money teaching, but um, really, um, I see myself as a painter. But I see myself as a teacher. That's what I do. I teach art. Um, and a photographer. I'm the founder and creative director of Rococo Chocolates. I uh, I make music with a computer. Filmmaker for a living. I'm an illustrator, art director, and I do set design as well. Describe what you do in five words. Um. Ooh, uh, fluorescent. Observation, drawing, expression. A magical fantasy world of chocolate. Thoughtful. Mm. Experimenting, finding. Fun. Energetic, frivolent. Minimal. Messy. Um, sometimes laborious. Creative. Chocolatey. Challenging. And dusty. Uh, two more words, two more words. Uh, I, I, uh, rapid. <laughs> Painterly. And... Uh, People-based. Making films to become professional. Uh, uh, that's really difficult. I'm really bad at maths. Do you ever doubt yourself? Um, no. Um, we all have moments of doubt all the time, and if we... If we didn't, we'd probably be totally obnoxious people, but um, yes, in a way, but also in a way you have to just stick with, with what you believe is right. I think I've got quite a good inner sort of, I don't really care what people think too much. Now I've got a bit older, but in my 20s I tended to think I'm not, but now that I'm in my you know, mid-30s, that's sort of diminished because I'm quite used to what I'm doing. So. On occasion. Yeah, I think most people do doubt what they do now and again. But uh, I think the key thing is just to have a discipline as much as you can, you know, so you can just work through it. Otherwise, you end up sort of just navel gazing. <laughs> a lot of people can, you know, people hate on things, but, but it doesn't actually affect me personally that often. I don't, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of I write for myself anyway, mainly. What is the number of your favourite bus? 13. I think it's a 344. Four. Yeah. That would have to be 137. 17. Uh, the bus I get on at the moment most of the time, I'm quite pleased to see it late at night after work, is 270. At what hour of the day are you most productive? I actually really like working at night, evening times. I find kind of quite magical. Um, 7 to 11. 10 a.m. Definitely night time. <laughs> Always night time. Um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not necessarily anything to do with the fact that, you know, I sleep a lot during the day if I'm DJing at night, but definitely something about, you know, night, everything's quite quiet. Um, probably in the morning, but not too early. I'm always alone at night time. <laughs> if you could show your work in any place in the world, where would it be? Well, we've already had someone at the top of Everest with a bar of our chocolate. I'll go... 
Odeon Leicester Square. The Grand Canyon. A coronation. Uh, it would be in the Gagosian Gallery in King's Cross. Uh, maybe on a billboard or something. Yeah. <laughs> something where people see it really big. Um, any space? Maybe like inside somebody's head. Like, so when they close their eyes, it would just be like there, like DMT or something. That'd be quite amazing, wouldn't it? It's a bit trippy. Where do you find your inspiration? Everywhere. It's, it's on the bus, it's uh, uh, you know, looking at media, it's talking to people, it's looking at other art. Oh, walking around London. Just looking, just looking around the city. All sorts of places. I, I, actually, it's places that I tend to know and, and grew up in. So, for example, sort of Ramsgate. Or, you know, I love going down to the coast when I can to draw, paint. But um, it's it's often to do with sort of connecting with a place or people. So, it's, you know, for example, if you, I've lived in Tooting for a few years now, and it's only recently I've started to see it in possibilities of making pictures or drawings. Yeah. Whereas before, I just sort of, you know, it feels a bit cluttered. But then suddenly you sort of, I suppose you find... Um, headspace, so to speak, and then you can start to see possibilities. Reading books. Often nature, walking, eating wonderful meals. Listening to music. Uh, just thinking. Yeah, just thinking about things. Watching the films that people I admire have made. Practically, yeah, because if, if, if I'm working towards a given goal, you don't actually need inspiration because if you're, if you're delivering, you know, an idea of someone, which is what you do often, you know, if you're like a producer or if you're producing for someone else in particular, um, then it's normally quite, it's actually a lot, you know, more straightforward than people think. What is the first thing that you do when starting a new project? First of all, I think of the idea, then I do some research, then I doodle for about one minute, and then the tiny thing that I doodle, I spend a month making, try, trying to make it look like my doodle, but like as, a, as an actual. Yeah. So trying to keep those that, that kind of size or that kind of first initial yeah. is really hard to actually make final. Make sure I've got solid notes on everything from characters to shot selection, etc., etc., etc. Have a cup of tea. I put something on the canvas. Sounds silly, but it's it's very easy to kind of, you know, you just have to do something. It depends very much um, whether it's something which we're doing on a quite a big scale or on a small scale. So we have two distinct ranges with Rococo. One we call our chocaporte, which is essentially things that can be sold to places like Liberty, they don't have a, such a short shelf life. And then we will be probably producing larger numbers of them. So then we probably need to start actually thinking about the packaging. When we're doing the what we call the Rococo Couture range, which are like making a pair of handmade shoes or a handbag or a suit, they're more like one-off items. We're making tiny batches that are being done very much by hand, they're very fresh, they don't last for very long. So although we might have a flavour that's very successful and we keep making it, each batch is a separate thing. So they're being made continually and then they're packaged in a slightly different way. So that's more about the flavour and the ingredients. What is your least favourite animal? Well, rat. Yeah, especially the super rats at the moment. Crocodile. <laughs> a fish. I like snakes. Perhaps a chicken. Dogs. Fucking hate dogs. I like cats. I don't care what anyone says. Whose opinion do you value most? Georgia Stretsov, who's a Russian guy, he's awesome. And Chris Apelli's kid. People I work with. Collaborators. Or my brother. Uh, my daughter's. She's 18 months. 
she finds it hard to explain herself sometimes, but she makes more sense than most people. It sounds a bit arrogant, but sometimes you have to sort of trust your own gut feeling about things. There are people that you meet, um, you've always respected, and it's nice to get their opinion on things. But I think at the end of it all, you, you know, it's, uh, you paint for yourself, really, so I suppose you know, it's your own counsel, really. What are your ambitions? Features, to direct features. Work. Uh, you know, with more with more people, different types of people that have their own, you know, they could, I'm not against, you know, they could have really set goals and they could be doing a totally different thing to me, but if they're up for like, you know, you just kind of mix it up. I've, I feel like I already have um, succeeded because I didn't want to win the Turner Prize or I didn't have very like high ideals in that sense, but I think I need to come up with a new set of things that I'd like to do because all of the ones I've wanted to do, I've actually already done them. So now it's time to rethink them. To make them work. <laughs> it's really simple. I think actually it's... Um, I think my, my first ambition is to be an art fair artist. It's very low ambitions, but it would be nice just to be out there selling some work and getting some feedback from people looking at your work. So to kind of not just be studio-based and I don't have that grand dis disillusion... <laughs> but it's like you know just to kind of get some work done and and show it to people simple really